let's take a moment here and let's talk about something real quick. I got a pressure tank, uh, well pumps. A well pump? <laughs> when you have a well pump, we have a shallow well pump in our house, but any kind of a well pump that you're gonna have, you're gonna have like a pressure tank to store the water that you pump, and that way you don't have to run the pump every single time that you, um, you don't have to run the pump every single time that you want to take a shower or whatever. Um, you'll have some pressure built up that way you can, you know, wash your hands or whatever real quick, that kind of stuff, um, without having to actually run the pump every single time. So let's talk about mine. This is the pressure tank here, big blue. And then you got the pressure uh, uh, pump up here. This is actually in my system, I call this pump A for reference. I don't have a pump B because I don't have the second well installed and I don't have a second pump that's coming in the future, but I do already have the system programmed to do this. Um, I have tapped my pump, my pressure. On top of the normal pressure switch like you would have in a normal pump system, I have tapped off here. And this line comes over here and comes up here to this, um, this is actually a an, an, uh, Yokogawa pressure transmitter, and this thing will output four to 20 milliamps. This thing will put out, this is in percentage of scale, um, but it'll output four milliamps at zero PSI, and it'll output 20 milliamps at 169 PSI. I didn't program this thing. I don't have a heart communicator, so I can't rescale it, but, um, that's the way it is um, from the person that I got it from. So uh, since I can't change it, I go ahead and leave it and I just change my software. So this thing, the four to 20 comes into this device here, which then converts the four to 20 into a zero to five volt system, which is then read by an Arduino Mega with an ethernet shield. Okay, so the Arduino Mega reads that zero to five uh, through its uh, analog to digital or its analog input pin, which is this is the wire it's coming in on right here. But anyway, um, and then based on certain parameters, it'll either run the pumps or not run pumps. Um, the outputs of the pump for the pumps and stuff come off of these pins here, which come up here to these transistors. The transistors then will invert the logic and then also allow me to drive the relays with. Um, a larger signal from the transistors, but a, a smaller signal from here. And since it inverts it, this relay bank here needs a zero or a low in order to toggle the relay. So I give it a high in software, which makes more sense to me when I'm writing the software. I write a high, that makes this thing be a high, but then it inverts it as a low down to here, which tells us to run. Um, okay. I also have a real-time clock module in here, um, and that communicates to here. So once a day, through the Ethernet, this thing logs on the Internet, gets the time, the date, and then it logs it in here. Um, and then it sets this every day. Um, there's a heartbeat here, or I call this the watchdog circuit, and what this does is every five seconds the Arduino sends a pulse. That's what this light is here, so every time it sends a pulse, you can see that light. When it sends that pulse, it allows this to stay high. And then after 12 seconds, if it doesn't see that pulse, that heartbeat, then that drops down to zero, which is the same as ground. And that grounds the reset pin on the Arduino, which then resets the Arduino and tells it to restart. Um, this thing logs onto the internet. Oh, and then these relays down here, they toggle larger relays. So I'm not driving the pumps directly off these little tiny relays. I am using larger relays and I'm double contacting them. So if you know anything about industrial relays, I'm having it come in on terminal 14, which is one side of normally open, comes out of um, 14 would be 11, which is the common of that same contact, then goes to the second common on the relay, which is 21, and then comes out and goes to, comes out on 24. So I'm using both sets of contacts on a dual contact relay to control it so I can control more current that way. Um, I do have a 24 volt power supply for the for the, the pressure transmitter. Um, I have intentions if I can to make that go away um, and have uh, a five volt system, but I don't know if they have, I'll have to find a five volt transmitter. But I mean, this is here, so why not use it? So I'll probably keep it, whatever. Um, I do have a menu here and I do wanna change something in here. 
um, the menu right now. When I program this thing, uh, I just reloaded software last night again because I just made a couple things just to make it faster and more stable. It's been stable, but I just wanted to make it a little bit more stable. But when I wrote, when I wrote the software, daylight savings time was not active, and it is right now. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to push any key on the keypad over here and put my password in, which is pi314159. Hit enter and log in successful. It brings me into my menu. Now from here, I can change all kinds of things. System settings, I can change time settings, display, um, other system settings, uh, and restore. Restore will restore everything back to factory defaults, um, but I don't want to do that. I want to go in here to time and I want to change to number five, which is daylight savings time. And right now it's, we'll change it to a one. Yes. Uh, make active now. Yes, active now. So now we should have, and let's check my time zone too, just, just to make sure. Um, one, time zone is four. I should be six, so we'll just hit six again just to make sure, and then We'll exit. Okay, but here I can also change display, how fast, how often it displays this. I can do some system settings in here. I can do keypad to bounce, change my password, all that kind of junk. Um, come back out of here. Set points, I can I can change my threshold setting, which is um, I have a lead lag system with a pump A and B. So one time pump A will be lead, and then pump B will be lag. So if pump A can't make enough pressure, it's the primary running one, but if it can't make enough pressure, that amount of threshold pressure within a certain amount of time then pump B will kick on and help it But like I said, I don't have a pump B right now pump on pump off pressures um, And then I also have a maintenance menu Ma maintenance menu is I can put pump A or pump B in, man in maintenance mode pump B is in maintenance that tells it not to run pump B since I don't have a pump B um, And then bladder tank once every month or so I like to come down here and I do this bladder tank thing and what it does is it disables the pumps allows me to drain the bladder tank and then I have to put two PSI of air pressure in the bladder tank less than what my pump on pressure is and this thing walks me through that process. The next uh, iteration of this controls, this will be all automatic. It'll do it once every month automatically. So we're gonna come back out here. Um, maintenance mode, no. I'll just exit. And it's, I do have a couple little issues here. I'm not gonna say I don't but we're gonna exit here, and then we're gonna come out, what the hell is going on, D? Exit, damn it. See, like I said, I have a couple little issues here every once in a while. So now we're filling, because we've reached 42 PSI, um, and my, my um, water softener is uh, regenerating. So I'm gonna go upstairs and show you. Now, once every five seconds, or every 10 seconds, I mean, this thing will send data. Uh, it does a client print for anybody who knows what Arduinos are. It does a client print to a PHP web page that I have, and it gives it um, current time, current date, uh, threshold pressure, pump on pressure, pump off pressure, uh, all time record high pressure, all time record low pressure, current pressure, uh, what pumps are running, which pumps are in maintenance mode, and which ones lead or which ones lag. It puts all that stuff into a client print statement that goes to a PHP file or a PHP script on a web server, and then it goes to a web server, and I'll show that quickly. There's also a switch here in case the system malfunctions, my wife can just put it on monitor, and then the pressure switch down here will run it instead of this, and then the system will just monitor. So let's go upstairs real quick, and I'll show you the website part of this. All right, try to hold my phone still. Well, I'll show you this part. Okay, so this is the page that I built. Um, which is on a server that I'm running off my own computer, um, which is why I have such a crazy web address. But <clears throat> this page will show you uh, the last time this page was updated, what date, the time it was last updated. Um, it'll tell you the displayed pressure at the time that, it, that, that this is. It'll tell you what the record low is. It'll tell you what the, obviously zero when you do maintenance, zero will be the record low. Record high, which should be close to my pump off pressure, which is 62.12. Pump on pressure is 41.96. And threshold pressure is 4.96. That's the pressure you have to overcome in order to not run both pumps. Right now, pump A is in lead because pump B is in maintenance mode. 
maintenance mode uh, flag color here is yellow. If it's running, it's red. If it's not running, it's green. And then this part over here, I have a graph. So it'll actually graph out my pressures. You can see here, I can refresh this real quick. And you can see this part over here. I'm, my, well, my uh, water softener is regenerating, so that's why I'm getting a lot of fluctuations here, and I'm running so often here. Um, but this will tell me this. And then once every day I have a batch file on here that will open up this page, which is at midnight, it opens up this page, and it, it's a different graph every day, obviously. And it's 24 hours of running, whether the pumps were running or what the pressure was. 24 hours worth of data and then it saves this as a PNG file and then automatically moves it into a directory that I have that's a trend um, directory which I'll open up here this is my trends directory and then I have I move them every once in a while plus I just purge this whole thing so then like this is yesterday's data and it brings it all up like this so I can see everything right there and it does that way it does a graphical um, backup of my system now, you might think, what's the point? Why, why do this? I mean, isn't a pressure switch enough? Yeah, a pressure switch is enough if you're not me. Um, I like to have data and I like to have uh, controllers and things like that controlling things because I can learn a lot from my data. For example, I know that when someone flushes a toilet, I know exactly how much pressure drop that's going to cause. I know exactly... I can tell that my wife, I did the timing earlier, I know my wife took a 15 minute shower today, but that's okay because I took one too, that was 15 minutes, and I know my 15 year old daughter takes a 21 minute long shower. I can tell that data. Not only that, if let's say I make, let's say I make my pressure and then immediately the pressure starts to drop, which was the case when I first installed the system back in uh, March or April, um, it would come up to pressure and it would immediately start to drop. And then it build pressure and immediately start to drop. And what that told me was, is that I had a leak in the system. So I didn't know I had a leak. It was leaking in a place that was like leaking directly into a drain kind of a thing. It'd be like a toilet. If you imagine a toilet flowing all the time, right? It just leaks right into a drain. You would never know it. Um, especially if it was a really slow leak. A lot of people know when their toilets are running though. So that's, a, that's that kind of an example, but not that's not what the situation was. It was actually a pipe, a leak in a pipe, and it was leaking in the basement. And it was leaking directly into a sump pump hole. And so it was almost impossible for me to know that it was there unless I spent some real time in my basement and, and just like looked at my pipes for a couple hours. And who, who does that? But as soon as I turned the system on, I saw that first graphical representation. I could immediately see that there was a leak. So I started hunting. My wife and I found the leak. We fixed the leak. Boom. Now our pressures are good. I'm saving water. And not only that, my well pumps have gone from running maybe 15, 16, 17 times a day to only six or seven times a day, depending on how much water we would use in one day. So I just wanted to take the time to show that real quick um, and kind of show off a little bit, I guess, so to speak. But um, there are other iterations coming where I'm going to be able to do a lot more of the things that I'm doing now. I'm going to put some flow meters on it so I can see which pump, how much is coming out of each pump, and then how much we're using in the house. Um, I want to be able to, to, to monitor that, how much volume of water we're using. Um, and then I also, crazy, I want to put a continuity, or not a continuity, but a conductivity probe inside the brine tank of my water softener. So that way I can measure out the salinity of it and then know when it's time to add more water softener salt to it. Um, and then I also want to put a system in there with valves to where that pump pressure, the air pressure, I was telling you about inside the bladder tank, how I have to drain it, and then I want to make all that automated so it just automatically just does it once every month. I don't even have to think about it. It automatically turns on the air compressor and everything at like noon or something when no one's here. Um, turns on the autom it turns on the pump pressure and it drops a well, the house pressure to zero, and then automatically adds air till it's at the right temp pressure and then trips the, the valve and then puts everything back into service again automatically. So, but th that's coming. That's just in the future. So just wanted to show you that real quick and like, subscribe, all that junk, you know, later. Bye.